Hey gamers, we are back with more uh, That Dragon Cancer. Um, I am kind of recording this in a long session and uploading it over periods of time. That's why I am in the state I am in. If you're wondering or curious or you already knew that and it doesn't matter. But we're at the part adrift now. Um, yeah. I'm guessing those are to stimulate uh, tumors that some cancer people have. That's my guess for that. I have so many things stirring around in my spirit that I have to write to settle myself and find God's wisdom in the midst of chaos. I'm scared I won't be strong enough to face the things we might have to face in the coming weeks and months. But then I remember how much grace God gave us to walk out everything we've already faced. I've never felt completely broken and I've never felt alone. So no matter what comes next, and I truly cannot even begin to guess how this will go. I know we will be here. I want to shout out, look what God is about to do. Watch how he delivers Joel. And at the same time, I want to roll up in a silent ball and wait it out with fear and trembling, so aware of all my doubt but yet convinced that my doubt is insignificant compared to God's grace. Well, you definitely have a different perspective than I do. That's all I'm going to say about that. been through so much already. This is a new degree of tragedy, but it's not so much different from the struggle we've already been living. We pressed into God. We pressed into faith. We fought until we found peace. We stood in peace when our flesh wanted to strive more. We stood in peace when it started to feel like laziness or foolishness or both. <laughs> we waited for God to direct us specifically in prayer because all the directions we had initiated had not panned out. We prayed for no nausea, because that's what we felt in our spirits we were supposed to pray, even though we would prayed it countless times before while Joel continued to vomit. We saw one small miracle, and then another. We waited to pray specific things until we were given specific direction, and we saw bigger miracles. And yet, who asked either of us if we were doing enough, trying hard enough, we would say no. Joel, then you want to stay and do the best you can for him to stay there for 
you mm-hmm. been catching up from this week? Your teachers are going to send you homework, and we'll just try to do a little bit of it every day. So it won't be that bad. It'll still be fun. And then be how many kids get to go and go on an adventure across the land and the sea to see the country? And what do you say in the middle? It's not just a scale. Middle of the park in the middle of the park. long day draws to a close. I am tired, but I'm not sleepy. My face is puffy from crying. I have a dry throat and dry hands, a slight headache, and a desire to write down absolutely everything. I want to describe the feeling of being entirely empty and entirely resolute. I want to explore how I can be deeply sad and incredibly hopeful at the same time. I want to talk about holding Joel's hand, walking down the hall, wanting to soak in the moment, to memorize the feeling of having his hand and mine, to let it matter, and then hating that my thoughts swing to, because what if I can't hold his hand one day? And hating that thought, wishing I could just appreciate each of Joel without that appreciation spilling into the pre-morning I refuse to do because I believe he will live. But instead of fighting the brief thoughts of mourning, choosing to fight instead that lie that says that those thoughts betray some doubt, some mistrust of God when I know that those thoughts make me human, that God knows I am human. He doesn't make Joel's victory dependent on me never feeling unsure. I won't let myself hold anything back this week. I would rather feel disappointed and let God heal my heart than to feel like I did not push myself as far as I possibly could in faith for my son. Oh, her expectation is so maddening sometimes. Do you know what she wrote on the eve of Joel's first surgery? The one back in January when we first found the tumor. I seriously feel like a kid on Christmas Eve. (laughs) I'm pleading for God to spare his life. And I'm tempted to despair because self-inspection leads me to conclude I shouldn't expect much of anything. (sighs) And yet my wife is expecting a surprise party from the Lord. Replete with presents. Supernatural miracles. of a very brave knight named Joel. Joel the baby knight? Yes, Joel the baby knight. But he's also Joel the very brave knight. And he was being chased by a dragon. Because of his tumor? Mm-hmm. Where does the dragon live? Is the dragon big? Very big. Does the dragon breathe fire? Yes. Too much fire, in fact. So, Joel has armor, like a sword and a shield and stuff? 
So, so Frey. Oh my God. Sergil, with his sword and his shield and his awesome spear and his super jumping ability. <sighs> what do you have to wait for the super? Being chased by a dragon named Cantor. What other superpowers does he have? Uh, he also has grace. That's not a superpower. <laughs> it's the best superpower. You guys know what grace means? Yeah, it's kind of like hope. Yeah, it's kind of like hope. No, and he's not the only one who's ever tried to fight this dragon. Some, some very brave knights have fought this dragon and lost. And some are able to drive the dragon off. And if they can go home, and they can quit fighting for a while. In the kingdom and sea. Joel's been fighting this dragon for a long time, huh? A long time. But Joel found a nice empty cave where he could rest. And it seemed like the dragon couldn't find him. But just when he thought that the danger was past, the dragon found his hiding spot and came after him in the cave. Well, that dragon's going to kill Joel. Joel's going to lose. Why do you say that? Because Joel is just a big thing. You can't kill dragons. cancer right with Joel, and we know that God can win even if Joel can win. That's grace. <laughs> well, what about Tim from church, Mom? He died from cancer. Wasn't God fighting for him? Tim, we have to Tim from church, Mom. He died from cancer. Wasn't God fighting for him? Didn't he happen? Of course, God fought for Tim, too. But Tim fought so well. He was so brave and so strong. God let him rest. It may have seemed like the dragon won because Tim died. But we know that Tim's in heaven and that he's with God and that God is so proud of him. So maybe for Tim getting to be done fighting was. Ah. It's like a video game, you're just like, I want to win! Let me win! Okay, so that's what happened. I was really confused about, like, what was going on. Nice little glitch there. Drowning. Ryan! 
in the boat. <laughs> I can't. You have to. You'll drown. We're already drowning. How can you sit there like that? Despair doesn't help anything. <laughs> Neither does false hope. Damn. And I'm not despairing. How can you say false hope? You're drowning! Well, you're missing your oars! And you don't even know where you're going! And yet you're so sure you're gonna get there! It's better than drowning! Well, enjoy floating on the surface with you. There's nothing deep about drowning. Just get in the boat! You have to let me feel this! I'm sure my expectation looks like denial, but seeing Joel dying does not make me any less certain that he will be king. In some ways, I feel more certain, not because the same doubts don't come to me, but because I know that they will not be entertained much longer, because this chapter is almost finished, and we will have an ending one way or the other. So the doubts and fears that make me reaffirm that even if I'm wrong, this is where I stand, become less and less People's conciliatory words of comfort meant to reassure us and help us accept Joel's death don't sit well with me. They aren't offensive because I know the heart behind them is good, but they are weak words because it's so obvious to me that death is the given. I don't have to work to be ready for it or accept it. It is coming whether I would accept it or not. It has been coming slowly for so long. I don't have to work to understand that Joel is dying. It is obvious. Heaven is amazing. And so I'm not worried about death. It will come regardless of where I stand and wait. But now, death is circling close enough for redemption to finally feel closer. of the story where a daring rescue can thwart death's intentions just in time, perhaps when it looks like it's already too late. I want to watch for that. I don't need to focus my eyes on death, studying it in its slow progression. Its course is already clear. But there is a glory that is coming, and its journey to us is wild and quick and frightening, and I want to be watching for that glory. I want to stand trembling in awe before God and his power. Not sure that this thing that we've asked for is something we can quite manage, but trying anyway. Death is the given. But the life that is possible now for Joel, the miracle that could come now that death is so close, is something worth pursuing, worth risking everything to see with my own eyes. I don't know how I was trying to get there, but okay.
All right, we are going to end this episode here. Um, if you have not become a gamer yet today, I suggest doing so right now by clicking the subscribe button down below. Leave a like and a comment, and with that weird notify thing, if you want to do it, go ahead. Again, I do not care what you do with that whole bell icon chizwiz voodoo magic crap that they're trying to get you to do now. Um, but all in all, I like the game. It's really good so far. It's made me cry and tear up too many times already, but that is okay. Um, and yeah, always, always stay foxy.